Welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people. I'm your host, Cole Black, a.k.a. Vince Cole Muhammad. Cole and Black is what the universe was before the Creator put the sun in the sky. It's an essence more than a name. But I just want to briefly touch base with you all on why Cleveland John being stopped in California. They gave a description. Now, if, for those of you who don't know who Wycliffe Jean is, that's uh, the brother from Haiti. He ran for to be the president of Haiti. Member of the group Fuji's. Uh, lot, uh, he wrote, as a matter of fact, he wrote some songs for, uh, produced Michael Jackson. Big in the entertainment industry, known throughout the entertainment world. He was stopped and and handcuffed in Hollywood, California uh, because they stated that he fit the description of someone who had just robbed and pistol whipped someone. Now, when they showed the person that they uh, obtained, captured, who they said uh, actually did the crime, the description was totally different. Wycliffe Jean had a Haitian bandana on, a long sleeve shirt, a plaid shirt with red and different colors in it, and then jeans. The guy they apprehended had was had on a white t-shirt. Wycliffe Jean has no hair. This brother had a fade. So it leads me to ask the question: what description did he fit? They, 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 wasn't, they wasn't going by the clothing. They had to be going by he was black. That's code word. In certain areas, and especially in influential areas or areas that have money, if the description goes out on a police scanner, police radio, and it says, they say, what's this description? They they or, or they go out to the scene of of the accident and they take witness statements. And they say, "Well, what was they wearing? I don't know. Well, what was the um, ethnicity uh, of the perpetrator? Uh, black male. That's the description. So he fit the description of a black male. So that means that just like uh, 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 back in slavery days, black male." Uh, they sit the dogs and they just wanted to get a black male. Hasn't stopped today. Once the description goes out uh, over the radio, police radio, then we'll, then they'll do a dragnet uh, within a certain mile radius and scoop up every black male, stop them, pull them over. Now, the, and now, uh, Wycliffe Jean made a statement. Look, he said the the the, the The most beautiful thing about this is I'm still alive. Why did he make that statement? Because hadn't they ran his ID? Well, first, this is how it goes. They pull him over. Man, uh, this is Wycliffe Jean. Say, why you pulling me over? I'm Wycliffe Jean. You don't know who I am? Now that puts them on alert. Because if he didn't, if he hadn't said that, they probably would have shot him or beat him, right? Okay. Then he says another key word. Yeah, I, I'm going to sue. Now, now he's talking about money. Now, more fear is on the officers. And now they got to go run his ID to see if he is who he said he was. Then once they found out that he was telling the truth, oh, and then they apologized. Then they made up a uh, to cover themselves. Uh, but why did why did you put him in handcuffs? Because they have because the action has to be justified. Well, he made certain movements, gestures. Now he could have been talking with his hands, or uh, you may hear some people saying being black is a crime because we opposite of white. So uh, our movements. Our rhythm is offensive to some whites, 
So if it's offensive to whites, then they consider it a crime. So they're saying, uh, or, or they consider it uh, uh, offensive, the movement. So that leads them to be, uh, at least the police officers, if they're offended by your movement, uh, your actions, and if you speak with your hands, uh, it leads them to want to investigate further or sometimes they'll feel threatened because you're doing something out of the norm of what they do if it's white officers. Now, Hispanic officers understand if they're what quote-unquote what they call Hispanic officers. Now, if they like the uh, imitating the, uh, or now if they want to be white, like you have some black officers who wants to be white within their mind, then they'll take on the position of the the of a, a racist officer, and then they'll act in the manner in which that racist officer act, and they'll emulate him, uh, thinking that that's the model on how to be successful because they're noticing a lot of the tough racist officers uh, are in all the high positions and it's making the money. So they saying, well, I need to be more like this guy if I want to get to the money. And then they go out and they act in that manner. And I'm talking about the Hispanic and the black cops. But Wycliffe John said that the most beautiful thing about what happened was he was still alive. And he understands that. That hadn't he been Wycliffe John, he could have been severely beaten or killed. And so that gives you an insight into what to do when uh, a racist officer pull you over. You tell them, uh, I'm rapper T. I got over 500 Facebook friends. I'm going to sue you all. You don't have no reason stopping me. Do you know who I am? Because the white racist, he don't know who you who, who, who you are because he don't listen to that. Uh, he don't listen to rap music no way or R&B or any kind of black music. So he has no inkling of an idea of who you are. But you talk with the surety that, hey, you violate my rights. Matter of fact, why are you impeding my forward progress? I'm trying to get to when I have to be there by a certain time. Give me a just enough reason on you stopping me and putting handcuffs on me. And then they'll say, well, you fit the description of someone who just committed a crime. And you ask them, okay, well, well, well let me see. Uh, the description uh, that was written down on what the person had, what it was it look like, or what were they wearing? You know, uh, well, they, they, the most of it, well, and this is police talking. The most of it we got was it was a black male, and that's all they need to go on. They will stop every black male in that vicinity. This goes to show you that 2017. We still dealing with racial profiling. Now, why Cliff John wanted suing on the basis of police brutality? They said, "Well, uh, the the apology that the officer gave you wasn't sufficient enough." And why uh, are you saying this was police brutality? He said, "Well, there's uh, different forms of police brutality, or or being uh, of, of brutality, the uh, defamation of character." You know, uh, slandering of someone's name. Uh, see, and some of it is our fault as a people because we let them paint an image of us as though we are non caring and we, 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 we're only, uh, we only think out of our reptilian part of our brain. Like we only have one mode, uh, animalistic mode in the eyes of white people because you man I am telling you watching the movie Hands of Stone about the uh, Roberto Duran fight 
The guy that plays Sugar Ray Leonard. You will see this in a lot of their movies. Uh, it was the, the first fight Sugar Ray Leonard and uh, Roberto Duran had. They had a lot of controversy. They going back and forth arguing, you know, little tension in there, little racial tension. But, you know, these are two people really coming from the same ethnicity that one uh, has been watered down and the other kept, you know, uh, some of the uh, indigenous attributes, let's say. So, they going at it. Now, uh, I think it's 15 round. Roberto Duran looks beat. They flashed the camera over at the guy that's playing Sugar Ray Leonard and had him tiring, but with a, 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 a look in his eye like an animalistic, I'm hunting on the prey. To, you know, to get that image of, 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 of the, of, to, to be afraid of the black male. You know, they, they, Hollywood will do that. They'll portray you in, uh, 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 in an animalistic form to, so they can keep uh, propagating uh, their racist uh, mindset uh, within the public. So they had him towering over him, you know, looking fierce and, and scary. And everybody knows Sugar Ray Leonard in his fights, he 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 always kept a, in a sense, cool demeanor. The man's name was Sugar Ray Leonard. How you gonna have him look like his name was uh 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 Killer Broussard? You know, but that's the narrative that they want to send out and that they always send out. You know, because they got to keep this thing going. And so, uh, you have to be, um, have multiple, you have to un understand multiple um, actions. Meaning, you, in a situation, a hostile situation, because anytime it's nighttime, uh, white officers pull you over, you're in a hostile situation. Because what goes through your mind is you don't know what, first of all, you don't know the type of white person that's pulling you over. So you have to generalize and you have to uh, go through your past experience and you say, okay, 10 times that I dealt with uh, a white officer or, in, in, in fact, a white male, there's been some racism thrown in there on his part. So now you're on the alert. Now here they come with with the word play, you know. Um, pull you over? Can you get out the car? Because now they want to hear your response, and they want to hear the manner and tone in your response. Just like they uh, the video that's been circulating uh, of the white police officer, the brothers on the ground, or he, uh, uh, he, or he poses no threat to the officer, but you hear the officer saying, are you trying to reach for my gun? And he's nowhere near trying to reach for his gun. But what they'll do is, they'll, all they need you to do is raise your voice to, to the degree of where they feel as though it's threatening. Now, if, now, if you, now look, and, and it's the game. Now, if you whispering, if, if, he, if the officer says, What's your name? And you say, Joe. Uh, uh, um, are you on some kind of drugs? Are you high? You know, or, uh, you know what I mean? Handcuff you. Or if you say, Man, my name's Joe. Why you bothering me? Uh, that's a hostile threat. You know? And so people are tired of walking. People have to realize your tax dollars paid their salaries so they actually work for you. Some can't handle that fact that they work for you, but they work for you. And the proper response would be is um, you pull me over. Uh, will this be a, a hostile situation or will we handle this peacefully? And do I need to uh, wait for someone to uh, watch uh, the handling 
of this situation or do I need to uh, call a lawyer for my rights? You check, he's checking your mind. You have to do the same. You have to check his mindset. Because some are looking to kill. And you have to view that. Because your life is valuable because they didn't give you your life. So they can't take your life. So you have to preserve and protect your life. Even though uh, within Hollywood and within this society, black lives uh, are not valued. So they come up with the slogan, Black Lives Matter. Although it's almost an oxymoron. Now, Black Lives Matter to black people, yeah. But a lot of times to other races, black lives don't matter because it's shown in their movies and the way that blacks are portrayed. It's shown in the way public officials deal with black people and within those um, racist overtone jokes that they make. So they show us better than they tell us, but the kryptonite, they believe uh, that they can, that, that soothes all or that smooths everything over is one, even if they beat your head, they feel like all we want is an apology and we'll go away. Or a hug, some form of emotional uh, love or some form of emotional uh, terms or a show of endearment and we'll, we, and we'll forget the whole thing because in their mind really they believe that all we want is a pat on the head by white people they will try to treat us as though they treat their dog pat the dog on the head, he comes down, rub his belly, and he's fine. And so, they create a uh, animalistic image of the black male, and so when you get upset and you ready to sue, uh, you know what? Uh, tell him, uh, or, or, or give him an apology, and within that apology, uh, ask him uh, how his mom's doing uh, 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 and, and uh, offer him something to eat or something you know in, in other words pet his belly you know rub him on his head you know and smile at him because that's heaven to a black person is to have somebody uh, somebody white smile at him and give him a, a sense of endurement uh, and, and tell him that you know, and show them that you care a little, you know. Uh, we care about your, your plight and and in their minds, you know. And it's true, some black folks, they just roll over on their backs and they start smiling. They, they love it, you know. That's the highlight of their day that, you know what, a white person smiled at me and they told me everything was going to be all right. And, you know, the sun shined and I seen the sun rays and I believed them too. But in back of their mind, they like, man, this shit is still working on them. Hell, Willie Lynch was right. So then you have brothers such as, and wait, no, and a lot of the young brothers, though, we got to give a shout out to the young brothers that, that's carrying the torch. Uh, the only problem I have is creating the unity amongst the Umar Johnsons, uh, the Polites, and the Brother Panic, and Red Pill, Blue Pill, man, I appreciate you all for the shout out, uh, Krishna, uh, brothers that's, uh, Patu, uh, Haru, uh, Pata Haru, sorry about that, and, um, uh, other brother, Professor Grill, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Brother Phil Valentine, Dick Gregory, uh, True Islam, Wesley Muhammad, um, uh, you know, uh, who's uh, oh man, um, uh, um, man, uh, Hakeem Bay, um, um, uh, Brother Lean, um, uh, 
Uh, even uh, my other brother, man. Ah, man. Uh, Ali Muhammad. Uh, so many out there that's carrying the torch. Uh, uh, my Hebrew Israelites brothers. Uh, that's out there carrying the torch of knowledge and information which leads to freedom, justice, and equality. Uh, they're, out, they're out in 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 some social media and out in the public carrying this message uh, uh, because knowledge is power and they're actually acting as that, that, that lion's pup. They're, they're actually all of them out there uh, uh, doing their job and that's to uh, teach the uncivilized and they on their post you know and so there's no need for a vicious attacks uh, if you watch uh, Brother Farrakhan he get attacked and if you push him too far because he loved black people so much that he'll attack back but for the most part he's attacked more than he's attacking somebody Let's put it like that. You know, uh, Barakon did Barak, and he keeps doing his thing because the mission is more important. Meaning, why should I stop my mission to turn around and argue with you over something and you not uh, presenting uh, and you going off of your emotions? Why should I waste time arguing back and forth with, with you when? Uh, Things are evolving so rapidly and time is moving so fast to where things that were in the past are being uncovered and de discovered, which is another piece that has to be added to what was already known. And then you put those two pieces together, now you have something brand new. Well, not brand new because... It's not brand new, but it's brand new to us. Because it's just been uh, rediscovered in our time after having amnesia or being kidnapped and robbed and brought to America and suffered to our mind was gone. So as we rediscover the knowledge, but yet at the same time, it's fresh, so it's more potent. You know what I mean? It's like Man, let me get this in there. I, I, I'll get it in there because it popped in my head. So I got to give it to you, Dan. But it's like, um, let's say, back in the day when I was smoking weed. You The first, say you get a, a, a ounce. After a while, after about five days, it's not as potent as it was when you first hit the weed out of that bag and, it, and it's out of each bag you get it's fire but after you done smoked about half of it you adapted to it so it's time for something else let's put it like that so the knowledge was always uh, power in the beginning and we studied but the effect of it at a time when we reached our heights was it was just knowledge but now since we rediscovering the knowledge it's potent and and so the key is to move out on the knowledge to build on the knowledge because if you don't then you approve yourself unworthy and then you'll go back to sleep so that's why it says, or one of the reasons, it says big fields awake for the wide awake man. Because as you read, as you discover, and you put that knowledge together, and your eyes are opened up, then you able to see all the different fields you able to work out of. And you can move out on that. So uh, that's where we at today. 
And so the main thing is raise your level of existence and you have to feel like you're valuable in order for someone else to treat you like you're valuable. Meaning, uh, always walk with your head up, shoulders back, you know, look them in their cold eyes to let them know that you value yourself more than they devalue you and there's going to be a problem. Because, and that way, now, that way they can learn who's awake and who's sleep, And they don't have to treat everyone out of the same bowl as everyone is asleep. Then it makes them think twice. You know, uh, and and the one thing, the key word that Wakil Jean said while he was handcuffing him is he's gonna sue. They did it there, he's gonna sue. And then it opens their eyes up because that term sue, meaning you must got some money somewhere. To even And I don't run across suing every day. Matter, let me look you up to see if you're in a position to where you can sue. Who are you? Why Cliff John? That's, what's that, a gang name? Let me look him up. Then his credentials pop up on the screen. Because his credentials are on the screen, they put in the computer, it pops up. They say, okay, uh, sorry, Mr. John. Why Cliff? Uh, uh, why Cliff O? Brother John? Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, sorry, my homie. Uh, they know, now they want to try to speak your language. Uh, the show of a term or signs of endearment. I, you know, you speak you speak the language in order to be successful. So they try to get down like they understand you, you know. And but the the end ground that he received will last him uh, for a lifetime. Cause he always be weary when he see white cops pulling him over because of the traumatic experience. Uh, because they want to feel like we're non-human to where we can be pulled over at nighttime, handcuffed, looking at the guns, knowing what's going on throughout the media of blacks being killed, and then let you go and say, yeah, God, uh, shake it off. Uh, you know, you, you'll be all right, cornbread. Go on and uh, shake that off and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And that's it. And you still left like, damn, man, I came inches from ending my life. And once again, that's why uh, Wycliffe stated, the most beautiful thing about this is I'm still alive. At least they can go make some money and enjoy life and, you know, it, uh, uncover and discover uh, knowledge, wisdom uh, within this life time and, you know, within in this quest of life. Feral Pig Radio, we out. You. Yeah.